Hi, Scott from the Centre of Excellence's Computational Modelling Support Team here for another video on Total View Debugging. Uh, today I'm going to go over segmentation faults, which are a type of memory error you can get in your programs, where basically it's trying to read memory that the program doesn't really shouldn't really be accessing. So it's outside of the program's memory. So I'm back here in the total view folder. So I've added a new program here. So oops, if I select that and list, we can see I've got a sigfault.f90 program. Um, if you've already downloaded the rep repository, you can update it with git pull. And that'll just download the latest version of the repository from git. Do -do -do. Uh, it's just not set up properly at the moment. So you can run git pull origin master to tell it explicitly what to pull. And we're already up to date. So, let's make. So, make is a program that just build, compiles other programs. You can see here it's compiling mpif90 hello world.f90 to hello world.o which is what we did in the last time and segfault.f90 to segfault.o Another thing to note is I've increased the optimization level so I want this program to run fast so let's try and run segfault guess what it's going to do okay so here is what we get when we get a segmentation fault um, so this is saying the Fortran runtime library has a, had a severe error. It's received the signal for a segmentation fault, so the processor has, so the program is accessed outside its memory bounds, and the kernel has killed the program because of that. So we've got a segmentation fault occurred, and we've also got this. So this is a stack trace. It's similar to what you see in Total View. Um, you can see there's not much information here, so in the segmentation fault program called by libc we're in an unknown routine at an unknown line in an unknown source, source folder um, so every time you get a segmentation fault you'll get a stack, stack trace like this um, the first thing we want to do is um, try and get a bit more information um, Generally, you can diagnose a segmentation fault just from looking at um, the stack trace that you get. So let's have a look. So we'll go vim make file. So we're just going to edit this. And we want to add in our Fortran flags traceback. So what that does is tells the Intel Fortran compiler that we're going to want detailed information in our stack traces. So I'll quit that, make again, Oops, first we have to, um, just because um, it doesn't automatically auto update if you change uh, the make file, we'll just remove segment seg fault and type make again to rebuild it. So you can see now we've got dash trace back in that compilation. Let's try seg fault now. Okay, so we've got a little bit more information. We don't know what's happening here, but we do know that the last function called was in the routine main, line 51 of segfault.f90. Okay. So let's have a look at segfault.f90, and we'll go to line 51. So we've got a segmentation fault when we were trying to write run data. So, why don't we have a look in the debugger to have a look at what's happening here. So, module load total view. This isn't a MPI program, so I'm just going to run total view segfault. I should put a dot slash in there so it can find the actual program. 
and it's going to pop the total view again it's going to spurt out that big ream of information and then it's going to load up total view eventually here we go indexing indexing okay so we still don't care about startup parameters so what we're going to do is just hit go and see where we end up so we're in a call to setup and something happened we can see in our process window here our thread is in an error state we got a segmentation violation within this function setup. Um, you can see it didn't actually go into setup. Um, it's actually just defined up here. It's just setting A1 to 5 and B1 to 5 to 10. Um, so it did go into that because basically its optimization is enabled. So we just go out of here. Control Z just to pause that. So remember when we had the make file, we have optimization enabled. So that's the dash O2. Um, dash O0 is no optimization. Dash O2 is optimized for s speed. And dash O3 is make a few more optimizations that sort of might not always be in your best interest so it'll take advantage of any undefined behavior in your code and try and just run as fast as you can so if you've got some small errors that can enhance them if you're using O3 generally you'll try to want to try and use dash O2 um, so one thing the dash O2 function what O2 optimization level does is it inlines functions so instead of the program going along here and executing these one at a time and getting to this and going into that setup function what it does is moves the code from the setup function sorry that's just in the background so we'll foreground it again so it gets these two lines of source code and moves them into here so it writes them out explicitly so that means it doesn't have to set up for a function call, call the function and return from it. It just happens all in the one line of execution. So that's not too informative for our debugging. So what we're going to do is go... Hello? It's being a bit buggy. Yes, really exit. So we're going to go vim make file and we're going to lower this optimization level to O0 and again remove the segfault program make it again and I'll just clear the screen and dot slash segfault okay now we've got a bit more information you can see that the main function called the function mod segfault underscore mp underscore se something the lines cut off there which was in line 25 of segfault.f90 so let's go into segfault.f90 and look at line 25 which is this line here so we've got had a segmentation fault when we were trying to set the first element of array a to 5. So let's go back a bit and see where A came from. So we can see A is just a variable length array which was called in through setup. Go down here. So setup resolves to this unallocated variable called unallocated. So when we look up here we can see unallocated is an allocatable variable so that means when the program runs it allocates space on the 
space specially for that variable as part of the program. It's not defined when it's compiled. So you know how some variables are like real a5 is a five element array. Allocatable arrays, the length can be changed during the as your program runs. So what's happened here is, well, the unallocated array hasn't been allocated. We can see we've got a call to allocate the run data array. So it's being allocated as a length 5 array. So what we'd want to do is go allocate unallocated then we'd have to think about how long we want it to be. We're only, we're only accessing the first element up here. Let's make this a bit bigger. So we can get away with it just being length 1. Another thing to look at when you're allocating data is that there's a de corresponding deallocate de uh, call. So that says that the program's finished using the data and it can be freed for the operating system. So let's write that. Make. So this time Make knows that the source code's been updated, so it's just going to rebuild it automatically without me having to remove segfault. There we go. OK. So now we've got to the bit in our program where we're printing things. So it's vim segfault.f90. I've got in my program the helpful comment that the values here should be 10, 20, 40, etc. They don't seem to be that, so let's have a look at where they're coming from. Uh, so that was accessed in this call to run here and we're saying the value at run data i is the value of the previous array element times the number i so we started out with 10 and they should be according to our little comment they should be 10 20 40 etc Sorry, that should probably be 60. OK. Um, so, we can see we've got a logic error here. So what happens on the first element is the value at the first element is the value one before that. So we're trying to access... So run data one will equal run data naught by i. Now there is no such thing as run data naught, so this is going to be a bug in our program. Um, so it's accessed beyond the beyond the limits of the array. Um, so there is a way to check for that. So clear. Go back to make file. So you can see here um, in my Fortran flags, I've enabled uh, warnings and I've made all of those warnings errors. So that means any coding errors, any um, syntax errors in my program will be identified so the program won't compile if there's syntax errors. Another thing I can do is check all. So what check does is as the program's running it'll make sure um, that say arrays are accessed within their bounds, that sort of thing. So check is runtime checking, while warn is compile time checking. Um, so checking, so dash check will make your program slower, and it can identify errors such as, let's make, and set, run sigfot. So here we've got the error subscript number one of the array run data has value zero, which is less than the lower bound of one. And again, we get that stack trace um, if we didn't have the traceback flag when we were compiling it. So this one, again, these would just be unknowns. So it's always handy to have that dash traceback in there. So we can go back 
sigfault.f90 we can go back to here and say start at element 2 would perhaps be smart rebuild it okay so now we've got uh, subscript number one of the array run data has value six which is greater than the upper bound so we solve the lowercase but not the uppercase so going back here so this is coming from i which is coming from do 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 i is here so let's actually just get this up in total view since we're starting to get things a bit more complicated so we'll start up portal view with all of its debugging symbols loading here we are, OK, hit go here we are, exited. So it didn't stop at the error, so we'll have to do that ourselves. Um, so this name mod segfault underscore mp underscore ru, that's actually coming from the function name. So this function is run. So we can see if we go to line 36 of segfault.f90, so line 36 was here. So this is subroutine run in the module mod segfault. Um, so Fortran modules, when you look at the debug information, they'll have they'll be start off with the module name, then the function name. Uh, the MP is just an implementation detail sort of deal. So we had an error here where it was going one past the end of the array. So we'll put a breakpoint here, which means our program will stop once it gets there. Sorry, it's just a bit laggy tonight. Okay, we started from the beginning. So we've got our local variable i. So one thing you can do here is double click on a variable, and up should pop a window saying what that variable's value is. Similarly, if you double click on the actual variable's name, so we can do the same here for run data. So we've got i has the current value 2, and run data, it's more useful for arrays, um, just because you can see local variables in there. So I'll just turn that off for the moment. Okay, so we can see 1 has value 10, 2 has value 10, 3 has value 10, and so forth. Um, if you like, you can also change which slice you're looking at. So you can look at, say, 2 to 4 or whatever. So let's get that. So now what we're doing, going to do is just, because this is in a loop, we'll just keep hitting go and see what happens. So i is now 3. Run data 2 is now 10. 60, 240. 1200 so now what's going to happen and just go to the next instruction that's going to run oops and that was where our error is so let's restart do 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 being a bit slow today so this is going from i equals 2 to times and times is actually 6, so that's saying we're looking at value 6 in this field. So then you can trace that back. Times came from here, which was an integer input here. So times, ah, so that came from here. Um, so obviously for this toy example, that wasn't a truly enlightening statement, saying it just came back one, two, and so on. When these are huge functions, um, it's always helpful just to work backwards like I did there. So you'd go times, then there's control F will bring up the find, 
you can look upwards to find the previous occurrence of times which was here and then you can look at where run was called from which would be in the stack trace so run was called from segfault and if we click here we'll go to the go to the exact line that it was called at so here run was called at 6 we called run with 6 and run data yes we do want to exit so now we can go back to our program source code and say instead of being silly maybe we should look at the length of run data just so we're always accessing it so we're always so we're never going over that limit okay so we'll write that make for what should hopefully be the final time uh, here we go we've got an error call to length of run data was invalid seems somewhat strange what to do there's probably a perfectly valid explanation for that but for the moment I'm just going to change that to 5 just so we can wrap up since this has been 20 minutes so I'll hit make and dot slash segfault and there we are we've got our output so that covered some basics of tra tracking down seg segmentation faults and tracking down where you're accessing outside the bounds of an array um, most of this stuff can be used without the Without the debugger, you can just look at these stack traces when you've enabled the dash traceback flag, and then you can get a fairly good idea of exactly where it was in the code. Remembering that optimization can change what gets run, or which order things are get run in. So, if you if things seem really strange when you're looking at this stack trace, so you remember when we first started out we were getting the error was in the print statement rather than when we looked at the trace rather than the actual initialization statement where the error really was so be sure to put the dash traceback flag in anything you do and always be sure to try lowering the optimization level uh, one thing to note is as you add in more debugging information, it, the program will get slower, especially if it's a big one. Uh, one thing you can do to mitigate that is if you've got a program that's doing restarts, so say a model runs for five days, then it restarts itself to run the next five days, you can run um, as much as you can using the optimizer version, and then only for the bit which is getting the error you need to do the debugging in. So that's one way to make things a bit easier on you. Okay, thanks for watching. And for the next episode, I think I'll try and look at core file debugging, which is instead of opening up the debugger and running for the whole thing, just getting the state when the model, when the run crashed. Okay.